Hey guys, my name is Wonk. Uh, welcome back to another X Defiant video. Today I'm going to be giving you guys some more tips and tricks on to improve on your game skill. And um, I'm going to be showing you a couple things I learned throughout the beta that will help you guys in the full release. I released a settings video the other day. Uh, you can find it right here up top uh, or right here, one of the sides. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that, I recommend that you check that out first then uh come back to this video anyways let's get on with the tips and tricks all right first things first this game every character comes with a certain ability and um if you're not playing with a team certain characters and factions will probably better suit you to run solo rather than playing with a team so i'm going to be talking about what you should run solo and what you should run as a team if you're going to be running solo, I recommend that you run the Far Cry faction or the Splinter Cell faction. Just because these are so they're so good for players that want to rush and and kind of do their own thing on the sidelines. The Far Cry faction, they have self-healing abilities and the Splinter Cell faction, they have invisibility. So I think those are really good for solo players, but if you are playing in teams i recommend that you consult with whoever you're playing with and pick certain roles for certain people such as uh the ghost recon faction they are more of objective players they stand on point and they throw down shields and they have extra health the far cry faction could end up healing ghost recon objective players so if you mix certain things like this and you use teamwork you will win 100 percent of the time as far as weapon goes, I say run assault rifles uh, if you're first starting out. Uh, SMGs are more for rushing and snipers are more for skill. Uh, but if you want to play it safe, I, I say run ARs. So one thing I see a lot of people say is that their aim feels off or something about it just feels kind of off on controller. Uh, this also applies for keyboard or mouse. But one thing I found out really quick in the beta is that if you're spamming crouch like this to strafe and you stop, I have my hands off the thumbstick, it'll shake like that. Same thing goes with jumping. It'll make your weapons sway start moving around like this so if you're in a gunfight start strafing a lot more rather than trying to jump and crouch strafe uh that might throw your aim off a lot and it might f be the reason why you're feeling really weird with your shots now your your abilities your l2 these should be used in very situational cases uh, you shouldn't just be spamming them whenever you should just coordinate when you're going to use it if you're going to rush with the healer I'd say use it as if it were a stim in Call of Duty. You don't want to just rush and then uh, pop it because it has certain uh, delay times. Every ability you're going to be using is uh, going to be very situational. So got that guy. take in consideration that uh, you don't have it all of the time. And ability can make a break certain plays for you. Uh, one thing that also I found that helps me a lot is kind of a uh, tap aiming like this. I have the controller cam up. I don't know if you can see on the bumpers. I completely choked my shots there, but um, it kind of keeps you on point. A lot of people do this in Modern Warfare 2. And uh, if you're kind of pre-aiming a corner like this, you'll get the upper hand and be able to shoot that person that you're aiming at a lot quicker. kills here a lot of people are confused if slide canceling is actually in the game and it is to a certain extent in call of duty you used to just be able to tap slide again and you would stop that's not the case in next defiance so if you want to cancel a slide you have to either jump or aim down sights you have to do a certain action to cancel your slide which is basically slide canceling but you know you have to do an action to do it so it's not just tap 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 to slide cancel it's um you have to do certain actions. You have to be doing something to in order to do a slide cancel. Slide canceling is not as important in this game as you think it would. We originally used to slide cancel to refresh our tax sprint in Modern Warfare. And there is no tax sprint in this game. So what slide canceling really is for in this game that'll help you a lot is kind of stopping on dimes and jumping those corners like that. So if you're gonna slide cancel, you're probably gonna wanna do it before you jump a corner like this to get the edge up on people. Kind of throw off their aim. And it gives you, a, it keeps your momentum going if you keep sliding around like this. Now, if you're doing long distance uh, challenges, like let's say you're challenging someone from a long distance, don't, don't, by all means, do not start jumping like this because you'll get that weird weapon sway. 
Instead, think of it as if it's apex to negate your uh, horizontal recoil. Just start swaying uh, left and right. You don't have to worry about horizontal recoil if you're doing this. All you have to worry about is your vertical recoil. And to negate your vertical recoil, all you have to do is pull down very gently on the right stick. I know it's pretty simple, but uh, a lot of people don't know about this or how to uh, stop recoil. And a lot of people think that people have, you know, scripts or Cronus Zens, but it's really simple to, to uh, cancel out your recoil. You just got to strafe left and right and pull your stick out a little bit. Very simple, very easy if you get the hang of it. Another huge thing in this game that Modern Warfare 2 does not have that a lot of people used to is that you could finally reload cancel again. And this will save your life. Let's say you're going to push someone, you need to reload, you cancel it, and you just get the shots off on them. Tapping YY is how you reload cancel mid reload. Just tap triangle or YY twice and you'll get that reload off. For your lethals, there's a lot of different lethals in this game. Honestly, it's preference, but your lethals could make or break a game for your teammates. So I have an EMP grenade equipped. It goes really far if you need to throw it on objective. It, uh, what it does is it will shut down other players' abilities such as healing, uh, such as drop shields it'll it'll eliminate all of those really quick and uh, you spawn with it every single time that you die so again when it comes to lethals and abilities and all that stuff you always got to be thinking about your team you got to ask them what lethals they got uh which character they're gonna run so this game i think is going to be very team based these are very these, these tips are for people that are trying to learn new things and uh, a lot of people don't know a lot of things that I'm saying and a lot of people do but uh, well, another thing that you got to keep track of is centering you see where my reticle is if there's a guy that was going to peek this this corner over here I'm not looking down at the floor and I'm going to have to fix it and you got you always got to keep running with your crosshairs centered also every first person shooter game is right shoulder powered so if you're gonna take these peaks, you always have the advantage if you have the right shoulder peak. If the guy is on the other side over here, he ha he's at a disadvantage because he has to peek his whole body out. So if you have the right shoulder peak, you always wanna try challenging those and strafe back and forth. People trying to mess up my video, man. I'm trying to make a quick video. Now for your special abilities, you only really get them once in a match. If you're really slaying out, you'll probably get them twice, maybe even three times if you're really slaying out. But uh, those are also very important. In past first-person shooter games, you would get kill streaks and all that. And you can kind of count your ability, your special ability, as your one and only kill streak. Each player, each faction has different things. The Ghost Recon faction has a bubble shield. The Splinter Cell faction has literally wall hacks. So again, this game is very team-based and it'll probably be even more team-based once Ranked comes out. And yes, Ranked is confirmed in the game. It's right here. You just gotta use a lot of teamwork in this game. Also, if you feel like you're missing a lot of your shots, I recommend that you change your response curve over down to uh, Reverse S. The Reverse S curve is more of a uh, modernized, uh, response curve as from standard this is more of a classic play style as you would feel in modern warfare 3 modern warfare 2 back in the old days they didn't have response curves you couldn't change them and they were all the same response curve so if you're used to older games and you still play those today standard would probably feel a lot more familiar and if you're playing more modern shooters reverse s would probably feel a lot more smoother and fluent so if you're missing shots or it feels like weird and stiff to you, use reverse S or use linear, but use linear on a very low sensitivity because linear is raw input. As soon as you touch it, it's going to move. Just it's going to straight shoot to what you're doing. So if you're feeling stiff, use reverse S. If reverse S isn't cutting it, try linear out. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but to move a lot faster in the game and save your fingers from cramping up, have auto sprint on so you're not always having to click down on your left stick to sprint you could just hold forward and it'll automatically sprint and that'll give you a lot more play time instead of having to get off because your hands are hurting so you want to at least have your field of view at 100 if not more the maps and stuff are not that big you don't really have to be maxing out like this but this is just preference i preferably like it maxed out because it feels faster for me even though it's really not it just looks like it but i'd say stay in between 
110 you want to you want to be in the hundreds stay around the hundreds if you go a little lower that's that's you're gonna lose information because your your field of view is so tight in close quarters that you won't see people on your sides 120 is not bad but if you feel like you're missing shots try lowering it but stay in between the hundreds also your field of view keep it on consistent don't switch to independent if you switch to independent it'll when you aim down sights it'll zoom back in to default field of view and you don't want that because that'll mess up your shots only if you're a ranged player you might want to use independent but if you're running around pushing objective you're going to want to keep it on consistent for sure uh like i said i made a whole settings video go check that out if you want a more in-depth detail on all this i hope that these tips helped out i'm going to be having more gameplay and kill montages of me um showing off these tips and games and how they work i just wanted to explain them to you guys and get them out before the beta closes so you can uh apply these to any game you play these will apply to all first person shooters except for the ones where i touch on like factions and abilities but centering and right shoulder peeking and strafing and jump shotting all that does apply to other first person shooters so anyways gameplay video is coming out soon i hope this helped you guys and i'll see y'all in the next one